Hello and welcome to the Stress Knits podcast. I am Stacy, also known as Stress Knits Yarn on Instagram. Stress Knits on Ravelry where I'm trying to be more active and you can find my yarn at stressknits.com. All of that information can be found in the down bar if you're interested. Also, I will try to put show notes, but this week is going to be a little slapdash. Um, I have a lot a lot um, to get ready for and a lot of laundry and um, some business stuff I have to tie up before my husband, my daughter, and I go out of town. So, and we're leaving tomorrow night. So, um, yeah. So, hi, welcome. It's episode 70-something, 80-something. I'm not sure. I forgot to look before I recorded. Um, Eliza, my daughter, who is almost one. She's going to be 11 months in a few days. <laughs> so, um... That's crazy, but she's down for a nap. She is teething up a storm. Uh, she has three teeth right now, but she, all of her top teeth look like they're coming in and it's like one molar. So it's been a little rough around here. She's been down to one or zero naps a day on top of all three of us having a cold. And then now it's my allergy season. So it's just been a party over at the Oliver household as you can imagine. Doug's birthday was yesterday, so that was a lot of fun, but he had a dental um, emergency, nothing big, but something he had to get taken care of. And um, so we didn't really get to celebrate yesterday because he was a little miserable. So we're gonna celebrate later. I don't know I'm telling you all this, but I'm really excited and I haven't had a lot of adult conversation, even though I'm talking to a camera, but I'm an adult, so that's okay. And I'm assuming you're at least old enough to hold a conversation if you're watching this so there it is um so yes I have a lot to show you today um I have a huge bin of yarn I want to go through that's in the shop right now for pre-order so we'll talk about that at the end so if you're not interested it's not a big deal I have some whips a sweater plan some finished objects and some sample knits that came in so First, we're going to talk about sample knits. The first thing um, to come in over the past two weeks is the Skiff Hat by Jared Flood for Brooklyn Tweed. I mean, Jared Flood is Brooklyn Tweed, but by Jared Flood, it's a Brooklyn Tweed pattern. Here it is. This was knit by Laura Marie. I think that's how you say it. I am, I'm sorry, I've been reading it. I've never had to say it out loud until this very moment. I should have practiced. I should have asked her for phonetic. It's, so I'm sorry if I said that wrong. You can please feel free to correct me in a DM or below on this um, because you're amazing and yeah. So she knit this out of two skeins of Stress Knits Worsted, which is 100% superwash merino, a hundred uh 218 yards per 100 grams so this hat is amazing i've wanted to knit one for a long time but it just keeps getting pushed back in my queue so you have this obnoxious amount of ribbing for a double brim which i love um i love the look of it and i love the way it feels and then this amazing cabling and seed stitch and she did an amazing job this cute little pom-pom that she put on top that i love um Yes, this hat convinced me I needed a sweater in this colorway, which stay tuned because that is my next cast on. <laughs> so excited. Um, I love my worsted base. It's plumpy. It's, I think it's great. It's not too heavy, um, but I love it. So I'm super excited to have this um, for a sample in my booth and for the shop. I need to take some glamour pictures of it and the Kobo cat that I showed you last time. Um, but yeah, I'm obsessed with it. So thank you so much. So there's that sample net. And then one of my sweaters came in and I cannot explain the feeling I had when I opened this package. Now, this is another name that I have read a million times and I've also looked at the phonetic spelling because she has it on her page a million times and I'm going to get it wrong. So please forgive me. 
please forgive me. Um, I don't even want to say it out loud because I know I'm going to sound stupid um, because I know it's wrong. And if it's not wrong, I'm going to be shocked, but I know it's wrong. Um, Arsley? Question mark. I, I'm so sorry. You've been such a wonderful friend over the years. And it's one of those things I just read and then I just don't, you never think you're going to say it out loud. So she offered to sample knit a Saldatna by Caitlin Hunter of Boylan Networks. And I love it. I am, I want to knit one now. So, uh, here it is. The Saldatna. This is knit out of Stress Knits DK in four colors. It is etching, pillow mint, my jam, and birch. And pillow mint and birch look very similar, but I really, I love the subtleties of it. And then the little speckles at the bottom. She lengthened it, I think like a repeat and a half or two repeats, um, which honestly, I personally think it needs. Um, I love the cropped sweater thing, but I thought this one was a little too cropped for my taste and she was willing to knit a little extra. So this sweater is super special, not only because it's knit by a wonderful friend that I've talked to off and on for a few years now, but um, because these colors are super special to the Stress Knits repertoire. So um, a lot of you know that I had miscarriage almost two years ago now, which is crazy that was that long ago. Um, but after um, Doug and I came back home because we stayed with my parents for a little bit, um, for some emotional support. So we came back home and I just, I needed to do something, but I wasn't ready to like function fully as a human. So I just looked at Doug and I was like, I have some yarn. I'm just going to dye yarn and it's going to be what I like. And I don't care what anybody else likes and who cares? It's a real turning point for stress. It's yarn. Cause I was like, I'm going to dye what I want to dye. I don't care what other people like. I like it. So um, I came up with these four colorways <laughs> and so this is just it's so special to me I love it um, this is a size medium I think it's the last size that you only need one skein of each for and I just love the fact that you can knit a sweater with just the four skeins um, and I didn't have a lot of DK on hand at the time so um, you could have probably squeaked out we could have probably squeaked out a large, we talked about it, but I didn't want her to frog it and start over because I just, that's a lot of knitting. Um, so this is obviously just a little, it's a little too small for me, but I, I love it. I'm obsessed with it. Um, if I am ever able to wear it, it will be the perfect pairing with some skirts or high-waisted pair of jeans or, um, a dress. So I'm really, really excited about this. I can't wait to show this off. Doug took some beautiful pictures of it um, yesterday when he was taking pictures of the yarn. I asked him to take some beauty shots of this and he did and I love it so much. I do think I'm going to knit one for myself. I just have to figure out the colors. So we'll see. I just, I love etching. I haven't dyed it in a really long time. Oh, it's so pretty. I love it so much. Yes, Saldatna, Caitlin Hunter, love it. Thank you ladies so much for sample knitting. I have two left that are coming in. I have a, a Tanya that's coming in and I also have, it's another one of those things that I've read so many times and I've never said it out loud, a Roynia cow, cowl. Cowl, um, it was from Aramisu, it was an issue, um, Andrea Maori knit it. It's a, designed it. Um, it's a striped cowl with bobbles. And so that's being knit by a good friend of mine as well. And I'm super excited to see the Tanya. Oh, I'm just so excited for all of the sample knits. Everyone did such a beautiful job. So excited about it. <sighs> okay, so with that, let's get into what I finished. I finished two things. I didn't leave an ends on one of them because be honest with you, um, both of these projects had a lot of ends and I just, just didn't feel like it. And also I was mad at this project 
because um, it was sitting on the table next to our couch in front of our huge windows and um, Esther likes to bark <laughs> and um, not really bark but kind of intimidate passers-by <laughs> which is funny because she's if you don't know Esther is my dog she's almost two years old she's a pug so she's like maybe 20 pounds <laughs> so it's just funny that she's like the super tough dog but there was one dog that got a little too close and started peeing on the lawn and um she jumped up on the table and spilled my mason jar of cold brew all over my magpie tendency so i was really just not excited about this i still can't tell i think the stain's a little there but it also kind of blends in with the yarn so i just i don't know i'm still i'm upset about it like do you see this that's i think that's coffee <sighs> whatever but i don't I can't really see it in person. I can tell more um, on the camera. Anyway, so I just still need to weave in the ends. But this is Magpie Tendency by Melissa, who is Skinanigans. And I love it. I knit it out of Bell Jar on my favorite base. So Stresses Yarn Bell Jar. And yeah, I love it. I tried it on. It fits great. Um, it's another cropped t-shirt. It's wonderful. So... Uh, it fits really well, hits me um, kind of at my natural waist. Yeah, I love it. It has really interesting construction. Also, I'm sorry for the mouth breathing. I can't breathe out of my nose. Allergies are the worst this time of year. So, I'm just going to roll with it. <sighs> okay, so, so, yeah, so you have short sleeves um, you start with the neck band you build the shoulders and then you build the front and back before you work it in the round um, this is blocked I knit the size E because I wanted the full 12 inches of positive ease and I'm so glad I did that it's exactly what I want so again this will pair well with skirts and dresses um, I don't know if I'm brave enough to wear it <laughs> with uh, high-waisted jeans but we'll see so stay tuned but yes, Magpie Tendency by Melissa Skinanigans. Love it. Highly recommend. A wonderful pattern. Just cool techniques. And then I just love Bell Jar. So I think it turned out great. I'm really excited about it. I need to weave in the ends though. Pretty badly. <laughs> and then I was just on a finishing kick. Because I want to cast on everything right now. And um, yeah, I just, I felt bogged down. <laughs> And I, cause all I want to knit is sweaters. So I was like, I'm just going to suck it up and finish this. So if you follow me on Instagram, you've probably seen this, but I finished my comfort fade Cardi by Andrea Mowry. This was my April cast on for the year of Andrea. I love it. It's so hard to show cause it's such a large cardigan. Cause it's, I made it oversized and yeah, so. Um, here it is. It's just, it's so good. And the shawl collar is amazing. Um, I knit the size extra large. I could have for sure knit a size large. Um, I'll put it on. I mean, I have a collared shirt on right now, but we'll just go with it, right? So, as you will see, I could have totally, um, it's definitely oversized. I'm going to pull my shirt down so I'm not showing you all the goods. Okay, so, yeah, I love it. It's oversized. I haven't blocked it yet, so we'll see how much it grows. Um, yeah, but I wanted it to be oversized. I was worried the large was going to be too fitted, so that's... Why that is the shawl collar is great it lays very nicely um, I had to stop pretty early on the sleeves um, I have pretty short arms I'm a pretty stubby kind of <laughs> kind of person um, I'm five two you could easily miss me in a crowd um, yeah so I finished the the full fade on the sleeve like it said, and then you're supposed to 
um, go backwards. So it would have been this way. And then ending with the white cream color um, for a little cute accent on the sleeve. And, um, you know, it was already like to hear on me and I was like, I, I can't. I can't, it's like the extra four, four inches, three inches. It's, it would have been a decent amount <laughs> added to the sleeve that's already going to be too long. So, um, so I just didn't do that. So, I'm saying so a lot. But yeah, that's it. So I, <laughs> sorry. Um, I knit this out of Stress and Yarn again, and I knit it in birch grubby no <laughs> birch I smell snow then grubby then prudence it's the perfect cohesive light pink fade and I just I love it so much it's exactly what I wanted in a sweater um, it's going to be perfect I feel like this is just such a wonderful around the house sweater. I would definitely wear this in public when it's colder. <laughs> um, I just, I love it. This collar though, can you stand it? It's the whole reason to knit this is the collar. Oh, it's just, it's so good. I love it. I love it so much. And I just love the colors. Um, I knit this in my DK base, which is 100% superwash merino, but it's 115 grams. Um, I like a little extra yardage sometimes, and I think DK, it's the perfect way to stretch it. Um, yeah, so 250 yards. I love it so much. I'm so happy that this is done. So those are my finished objects, and I have two new cast-ons and then one that I'm probably casting on tonight or tomorrow in preparation for road trip knitting. So I really, um, I'll start with this one. So I cast on my no frill sweater. It was the first one that I cast on. Um, but I hit a bit of a snag and I could not figure out how to place the markers for the increases. And I talked about it a few times on my stories and a wonderful friend of mine, uh, Bailey, a friend, customer, person, wonderful. She's amazing. She, um, she messaged me. She's like, what size are you knitting? I've knit two of them. What do you need? And I was like, oh, I love you. Cause other people tried to explain it to me and it just wasn't clicking. I was sick, wasn't feeling good. Eliza was miserable and screaming and every time I try to sit down, my brain was just kind of fried. So this amazing human, she drew a chart for me and wrote out the instructions. This, um, the no frills sweater I think is in Danish originally. And I don't think, um, they need as much handholding in pattern writing as I do. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I mean, a bunch of people have knit this. It makes sense now. I was trying to put markers. I don't, I don't know what I was doing. It was the dumbest thing, but now it makes so much more sense. Um, so I'm starting the German short rows, which I've never done before, but I watched a tutorial. So we'll see how that goes, but here I am. I just have a 16 inch cord um, for right now, but so this is my no frills. I'm using Stress Knits Yarn again. I'm using my singles base and my cloud base, which is my Surrey Alpaca base, a great mohair alternative. I don't like that I sound like an ad, but I'm just really into this right now and I'm trying to get samples for SSK and just for the shop in general. So I'm on a my yarn kick. <sighs> yes, but I love this. So this is what I'm using right now. I'm not alternating skeins yet. 
Um, I'm going to wait until I finish the short row shaping before I start helical knitting, which I just started on the next project I'll show you. And it's the first time I did it, and it's genius, and it's super easy. Um, I think, whose did I use? Just podcaster. England, I think. Maybe Scotland. Is it the Babbles Traveling one? Maybe, I don't know, but if you type, I think I typed helical, or like helical knitting, alternate, I don't know, something like that. Um, I'll put the link in the down bar to the tutorial I used, and um, it's great. I think it was the same tutorial that Kristen of the Vol and Vine podcast um, recommended when she started talking about helical knitting. So that is going to be the alternating technique I use so I don't have any of the weird jogs that can happen. My nose is getting so stuffy, I can hear it. I'm sorry if I sound weird. But yeah, so I just, I really love this. It's It feels like the softest new puppy. Love it. <laughs> so uh, No Frills by Petite Knit. Highly recommend. It's not as hard as I'm making it sound. I just don't, I didn't have the brain space to do that so huge thank yous to everybody who helped and offered to help and my biggest thank you to Bailey because I wouldn't have been able to do it without you so there's that and then what I've mostly been knitting on is my Nordiska by Caitlin Hunter now I haven't knit many of Caitlin Hunter's patterns but I'm kind of really getting into them um when I'm losing inspiration, uh, I like to listen to podcasts and interviews of people who are creative and do that on a pretty regular basis, and it's their job. So I've been listening to a lot of like Christy Glass interviews and um, the Knit Collage podcast, um, Woeful podcast, just like that kind of stuff. Um, it's been really great and I have found myself really drawn to Caitlin Hunter and her process and her there are no rules and you do what you want and it's gonna be great kind of attitude and we all know that I'm also listening to Andrea Mowry stuff so because I love her <laughs> so um, yeah that's what I've been doing because I've just been feeling I have so much energy in my like, I feel so much energy in my body to create something, but I just can't find the thing to focus on. So, I'm just, I'm trying to figure that out because I feel the productivity, I feel the drive, I just don't know where to put it yet. I've been putting it into the shop, um, but I feel like there's something else. So, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. But there's something. Um, I don't know what it is, though. But um, my two wonderful friends, Jacqueline and Julie, who are Brooklyn Knit Folk and Sweet Sparrow Yarns, um, they did a mini knit along around Christmas. I think it was around Christmas. Um, they both cast on the Nordiska sweater and I loved it. I just didn't know what I would knit it out of. I wasn't sure if I wanted to do, I don't know how I feel about the color work at the bottom. Um, I just, I wasn't sure. And so I kept staring at it and I kept talking to Jacqueline and Julie about it when I was there. And I was like, I think I want to knit it without the color work, but she does have a pattern that's like the big sister to Nordiska. I think it's the Isclad, Iclad sweater. And it's the same shape, just no color work at the bottom. And it's a little more oversized than I want this to be. So I'm going in with the intentions of not doing the color work, but I might do the color work. I don't know. And I'll show you my thoughts when I show you some yarn. Um, yeah. So here's where I'm at. I just joined um, this morning in the round because it's a V-neck. So I just joined it in the round. I'm knitting the extra large. Oh, and the um, no frills, I'm knitting the large. But my gauge is slightly bigger, so 
um, it's gonna kind of work out between the large and the extra large, which is exactly what I want. Eliza is waking up or trying to go back down. Not sure yet, but we'll figure it out. Um, so yeah, so I, as I mentioned, I started alternating skeins. It's so hard to pick this up when there's not really much to it yet. So I love this. It has, so it has the V-neck, which I love a good V-neck. Um, and then it has cables along the raglans, which I think is just the sweetest detail. It's gorgeous. Um, yeah, I didn't realize that there's like no speckling on the side. <laughs> fine um so I get for only alternating skeins once I joined it in the round this is why you alternate skeins people it's my yarn and I know better and still I was lazy oh it's gonna bother me now oh, I didn't notice it it'll be fine it's not gonna bother me it's gonna be beautiful so yes Nordiska um big fan big fan um but i'm looking at the schematic and the sleeves are very big and billowy which is great but it's not really my style so i think i'm going to make the sleeves slimmer and tighter um especially once you get to like here <laughs> so there's gonna be that um, i also might separate for the sleeves a little earlier than intended because i think it's very much like a lot of Caitlin Hunter's patterns where the sleeves, I'm gonna sit up a little bit, where the sleeves um, start like here. And so I might separate a little bit early. I'm not sure yet. I'm doing the first round of repeats after I join in the round. So um, I'm going to get to the end of that and see where I'm at and see how much more increasing because after that, it's just sleeve increases, and it's already the most sleeve stitches I've ever had. And granted, my arms are way bigger than um, other sweaters that I've knit in fingering weight. So that's part of it. But I don't know. It just feels, I don't want it to be too baggy. I want it to be flattering. So um, I will keep you updated on what what I do. Um, yeah, so Nordiska by Caitlin Hunter of Boylan Networks. I am in love with it. I'm knitting this on my favorite base in my Prudence colorway. This is actually a colorway that came out of the advent calendar. And I, I love it. It's, it's one of my favorite colorways. It's such a good neutral without being too neutral. And I think it's going to look, I think it's going to look really good. I'm really excited about it. Huh, so that is the last thing I'm working on at the moment, <laughs> but there are a million things I want to jump onto my needles. But the first thing is going to be my May cast on, or is it April? It's my next cast on for my year of Andrea. Uh, I talk about it all the time, so I'm not going to recap it right now, but um, I skipped a month. And I kind of want to catch back up. So I think I'm going to cast on two projects this month. And one of them is something I've already knit. So because I'm talking about it and not everybody knows what this is. And I want to stop assuming that people know what everything is. Um, so I knit the Weekender by Andrew Mowry for my January year of Andrea. I used Knit Picks Stroll Tweed in the uh, Flagstone Heather colorway and the Oyster Heather colorway held double. And I love this sweater very much. I knit the size medium. I I love it. Um, I think this is going to be gifted to a friend of mine if she wants it. Um, but yeah, I love it. It has a cute little, um, ooh, it has a split hem, which I really like. Yeah, but there are things about this sweater. I wanted it to, I want it to be a little different. I'm going to do I'm going to have more stitches for my head because this, I don't know why, but it's not, um, it wasn't very big. It's really hard to get over my head. Um, so I'm going to, um, add like four stitches on each side and all that kind of stuff. I think I'm going to the medium size again, but I also wanted this out of my 
yarn. I'm breathing really heavily because I can't breathe out of my nose. I can't even like sniff this side. It's awful. Okay. Holding this sweater, I just love it. Um, I was watching the Christy Glass Andrea Untangled interview and uh, she was talking about how her weekender she's knit two and it's like her fancy sweatshirt and I think it's the best description I've ever heard of this sweater and it made me want to knit another one and so when my skiff hat came back I was like I, I need a sweater in this in this color I can wear it with jeans it won't look weird with jeans I could wear it with skirts I could wear it over dresses I could wear it with leggings it's gonna be great so there are a few things about the sweater that I wanted to change and I still love the sweater. I really, really do. And I think I'm going to knit, cause I have some leftover yarn and I think I'm going to knit Eliza a sweater, like a little cardigan out of this because I just love the fabric that it made. And Knit Picks is so affordable. I think this whole sweater cost me under $50 to make. Like it's, it's amazing. <laughs> and so, um, I love it, but I just wanted, I wanted a weekender for my shop because <laughs> um, I'm such a big Andrea Mallory fan, but I don't knit many of her patterns in my yarn and I want to do that more. So that's where I did the comfort fade. And so now I'm going to do the weekender. So this is it. If you're not familiar, it's an amazing, an amazing sweater that I think everybody should knit. Um, and it, it is reverse stockinette, but you knit it on the... Um, on the stockinette side, so you're knitting in the round, and then the sleeves are knit in stockinette. It's great. Highly, highly recommend it. I don't know if you can tell how much I love this, but I love this. So my weekender take two is on my worsted base in the lake effect colorway. So I have five skeins. It should be enough. Um, cause I I had a lot left over from my other one and it's about the same yardage so lake effect colorway um, I need to cast it on I think this is going to be between my Nordiska and this I think it's gonna be the most of my road trip knitting all I have to do is the weekenders knit bottom up so you knit each band separately and then you connect it in the round and you just knit up um, I think I'm going to add um, so I think I'm going to add about an inch to each, um, each of the bottom bands. And I also think I'm going to add an inch to the, mm, maybe half an inch. Well, if I'm adding, if I'm already adding the inch and a half on each band, I think it'll be good. Cause it was just slightly, slightly shorter than I wanted it to be. I mean, it was still, it hit me very well. I could still tuck it in and stuff, but I just wanted it to be a little, a little longer. So I'm going to do that. Um, bind off a few more stitches at the neck, but that's, that's about it. I think this sweater is amazing and I haven't re-knit a sweater in a long time. The only one that I ever re-knit was the Grace Cardigan by um, Jane Richmond. I've knit two of those and I will probably knit a third. Um, so this is my first sweater that I'm repeating in a long time and I'm really, really excited about it. So it's all wound up, ready to go. Um, I just bought some new needles because I wanted um, my Addy uh, Rockets. So I have those, I'm really excited. So I think I'm gonna do that tonight. I need a quiet space to really focus because it's a two viewer cast on and that takes me a little bit of brain space to do. So um, there's one more thing I'm going to cast on. It is a boxy and I've talked about casting on a boxy for a really long time, but I finally figured out the yarn that I'm gonna use and it is my new Tweety base in Palm Lines. So nice, soft, pink, huge, oversized sweatshirt just like the box not just like the weekender um because i think each size has like 20 inches of positive ease which is a lot it's a lot so um, i'm really excited 
And um, with that, I'm going to go into stress knits. So if you are not interested, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time. And if you are interested, let's chat about it because I have a lot of dyed to order in the shop. Um, so as many of you know, if you are returning, I am prepping for the SSK Super Summer Knit Together hosted by the Knit Girls that I am vending at for the first time. And I am very paranoid about not bringing enough. So I'm putting a lot of my energy and my stock into stocking for SSK. So I don't have anything to put in the shop. And I was like, you know what? I dyed up a bunch of colorways that are perfect for sweater quantities and all of that. So I'm going to put that in the shop as a pre-order and I will dye them as they come in. So let's chat about <laughs> what is in the shop. Um, I should have sorted this a little better. So I got a new base and it's my tweed base. And I've wanted a tweed base for a while, but I, I'm not the biggest fan of, um, what's it called? Of like speckled or variegated skeins that are, I'm missing one. It's my purple one. Okay. Um, I'm not a big fan of like speckled or variegated skeins on tweed, I think. There are certain people who do it really well, like my friend Julie of Sweet Sparrow. So if you're interested in that look, I would highly recommend her shop. But, um, yeah, I don't think I could do it as well as other people. And sometimes that just makes me not want to do it at all. <laughs> so instead, I, I'm a big fan of my semi-solids and my tonals. So I thought I'm just going to do that. So I have my Perfectly Adequate, which is my gray on tweed. This is my medium gray on tweed. I have this oatmeal color, which is, um, I just, I can't, I can't handle it. It's gorgeous. I have Wisteria, which is my purple. Favorite jacket, which is my green. Um, mint to be, which is the mint. Betty, which is the blue and palm lines, which is the pink. So I think there's a color in here for everybody. Um, I love all of them very much. So um, if you are interested in tweed, I recommend running and grabbing a sweater quantity of that. I don't know how often I'll have it in the shop, but if I ever do shows, I'll have tweed. I have a bunch, a bunch of tweed um, going to SSK with me, which I'm really excited about. So, um, I know the show's in July, but I'm really nervous about not being prepared. <laughs> so, yeah. But again, I'm going to knit a boxy out of this. And it's 85% superwash merino, 15% nylon, which is the, um, the nep, which is what creates the tweed. So there's that. Um, I have some of my new colors that I haven't offered yet in the shop. Um, for example, I have... Where are you on my hair? I really should have organized this better, but I wasn't thinking. I didn't think I was gonna record today. Is it you? I think so, okay. So uh, Grubby, which is one that people have been asking me to put in the shop for a while now. Um, it is the dirty pink with gray speckles. I love this colorway. Um, I have a sweater quantity waiting in this colorway for myself. Um, for a later date <laughs> but I love it it's in my um, my comfort fade and I should mention that all of these besides the tweed the tweed are just the tweed <laughs> um, everything that I show you and that's in the shop right now is available on my halo and cloud bases which are mohair and alpaca respectively my favorite base my singles base which are my two fingering weight yarns that I love <laughs> and then I have my DK base and my worsted base um, I also did a repricing on my worsted base so it's a little more affordable because I know um, buying indie dyed worsted is expensive so I try to make it as affordable as possible so yeah there's that I have um, sweet disposition which is what I'm getting my no frills out of so if you want to do that I have a uh, no trail, not no trail, um, below my feet, which is just this gorgeous 
skate yarn. I think this would be really pretty in a Maritimo tee. I was thinking this with um, Betty and, where are you? And cheeks could be really pretty. I don't know, just thinking. <laughs> uh, I have Eliza, which is a colorway that people request for custom orders, but I just never have in the shop. So, Eliza. Um, I have a new colorway, Twilight, which is a soft pink with blue gray speckles. There's Twilight. Um, here's Betty on Cloud. <laughs> um, cheeks on Worsted. Succulents is in the shop, which is what I knit my birds of a feather out of. So if you want birds of a feather that is um, in the same color raise as mine, I have birds of succulents on the bases so that you can do that. Um, I have a, I don't know why I'm saying I have a bunch. I have Prudence single and um, Halo. I need to take medicine, I'm starting to fade. <laughs> Uh, perfectly adequate, which is my gray um, single and favorite, and then I also have it on um, cloud to show you, and then pillow mint, which is just a nice bright mint, which I love. Um, I smell snow. Somebody did a custom order of this on my halo base, which is the mohair, and I just died. I love it so much. Yeah, and then I have two new colorways. Oh, Lake Effect is also available if you want a weekender. So, like, there's that. Um, cheeks, it's just such a good pink on favorite. But I have two new colorways <laughs> that I am obsessed with. And I like to think that you are, too. Um, I've been teasing them for a while now, but I finally gotten around to photographing them and putting them in the shop and they are available for pre-order so if you are oh I'm just I'm obsessed so I dyed both of these because a friend of mine Jacqueline of Brooklyn It Folk she is doing a design and requested um, yarn support more than happy to do that for her so I was talking to her about what she wanted and she mentioned a figgy wine color so I came up with Dahlia and Dahlia it's there's so much depth to this color because there are different there are different ways that you can dye semi-solids and usually the way that I do it is I mix all the colors together and then I put the yarn in but for this one I layered it and I'm so happy with it um I'm so so happy with it so this is what I came up with and I fell in love with it. So here it is on single and then here it is on cloud. So I am in love with this. I'm trying to figure out what to sneak this into. Um, I'm thinking of the new Boylan Knitworks tea that's coming out, the Navili, something like that. Um, I think this is going to be part of the color work. I'm actually thinking about, let me put it together for you so that you can see it in case you're interested as well. Um, where is... Is it this one I want to do? No. No. I think it's Betty. Yeah. I think this is the colorway that I'm going to use for that tee, but I'm also toying around with just a cream. Um, so Dahlia... These are going to be the color work, and then this would be the main tea color. So I think maybe, I'm not sure, or maybe this way, and this is the little pop. Not sure yet, but I think these two need to be together in that tea. I'm really excited about it. Um, I've also thought about putting this in my door Disca, and so I wanted to show you how it looks with Prudence. I think it could be really, really pretty. Um, if I decide to do the color work, this is the color I would do the main color in. So Prudence and Dahlia. I think they were meant to be. So there's that. Um, yeah, so I just, I love Dahlia. It's a colorway that I'm really, really proud of. I don't normally do the darker colors and 
the more saturated colors but I'm so happy with how these turned out and I I just hope you love them and you order them and you make beautiful things with them so there's Dahlia and then the other one is also Jacqueline inspired so when I stayed with her in New York um, I obviously saw the infamous green velvet couch so I wanted to dye a colorway that was similar to it I have to cough I'm so sorry <coughs> So sorry, I really do take medicine. Um, so I came up with Siren. That's pretty color accurate, actually. It's a little brighter, but this is very color accurate. Um, the mohair, not the mohair, the Surrey Alpaca is a little weird, um, just the way it takes color. So that's that's what that is. Um, I think it would mute it down beautifully if you wanted to do a no frills or a coat book or something like that. But um, yeah, so I named it Siren. Um, this is based on Jacqueline's couch, and again, I hope you love it as much as I do. It's another one of those where I layered it instead of just combining the dye stock before um, before I put the yarn in. So I uh, I hope you love it. Um, the shop is updated. I'm hoping to have these pre-orders up until June, um, and as they come in, I will start dyeing them. So. Um, Please head over to the shop if you're interested. If you want some color, <coughs> so sorry, <coughs> some color combination ideas, please feel free to email me. The email is finally fixed. So when Doug told me he fixed the email with my website, because if you emailed the website, I didn't get it. Um, I thought he connected my Gmail with it. I didn't know that there was a separate account. It was just this whole miscommunication, which is totally on brand for us. So, um, I have all the emails now, um, so if I never got back to you, I'm sorry. I only got some of them in the inbox. I don't know, but if it was really important, please email me again. Um, I'm able to read it now through the site, so please do that. And if you're interested in, um, a custom order, if there's a colorway in the shop that's, if there's a colorway that you want that's not in the shop right now, email me. We'll do a custom order. If you're interested in kits for, like, the Saldatna or the comfort fade, um, just email me and we can put something together for you. So I hope you are having a wonderful time. I hope allergy season is treating you nicely and I will talk to you next time.